Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen, House passes bill restricting DJI drone use. PG Airways shows interest in Autos Aviation EVTOLs. And Space Perspective Development Flight 2 successful. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. House passes bill restricting DJI drone use. The U.S. House has passed H.R. 2864, the Countering CCP Drones Act. This would add future equipment made by DJI Technologies to the FCC's covered list on the premise that it poses a risk to U.S. national security. The Countering CCP Drones Act would essentially ban UAS and related tech produced by DJI from operating on U.S. telecommunications infrastructure. This trails several inaccurate and unsubstantiated claims against the company regarding sensitive data shared with the Chinese Communist Party. This would not directly affect customers, at least for now, though it is guaranteed to have a massive effect on DJI's U.S. presence. The act is not yet in place. It has only made it through one chamber. Supporters have plenty of work to do before it can become a law. Even then, existing DJI drones would not immediately become illegal to operate, and the government has no way of making working UAS into bricks. Still, putting DJI on the list allows the FCC to revoke authorizations for its drones with no additional acts of Congress if they wanted to. The bill is sponsored by Elise Stefanik, the U.S. Representative for New York's 21st Congressional District and 4th-ranking House Republican. After the break, Musk threatens lawsuit against FAA. Looking for a new generation of proven and efficient aviation power plants that boast modern engineering, electronic ignition, and both direct and gear drive systems? With 100 horsepower to 240 horsepower, the Skyline and Redline engines offer uncommon value in an overpriced industry. Whether you are looking for fixed wing or rotor, MW Fly Americas has been established to service the American market with dedication and expertise. MWFlyAmericas.com the legendary BD4C program is building an exciting future for those who want a rugged four-seat family flyer with a proven history. The SureWings program produces a complete kit and builder assist program that gives you everything you need to be flying a BD4CS in record time. For conventional kit builders, BD Aviation has parts, partial kits, and full kits for the 190 mile per hour BD4C that has logged thousands of hours. Visit SureWings.com and BDAviation.com for more details. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our Next Gen Minute. Musk threatens lawsuit against FAA. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk has threatened to sue the FAA over recent fines. He claims that the agency's proposed penalties are an overreach of power and politically driven. Musk's threat follows just a few hours after the FAA suggested a $633,000 fine for alleged violations during two Falcon 9 launches last year. He characterized the FAA's actions as regulatory overreach and an example of lawfare. Musk posted on social media, quote, I am highly confident that discovery will show improper, politically motivated behavior by the FAA, end quote. Beta Technologies gets government contract. Beta Technologies has been given a $20 million contract with DHHS, kicking off a pilot program, quote, to evaluate next-gen mobility solutions and infrastructure as a means of powering public health preparedness, end quote. Under the contract, Beta will install electric aircraft chargers at areas of concern that could conceivably require emergent healthcare and mobility. 
The hope is that Beta's ED Tall gear will bring an entirely new dynamic of mobility to those facing the worst of Mother Nature, thanks to their unique blend of affordable running costs, quiet operation, lightweight, and accessible operational requirements. Lockheed Martin NAB's $297 million NASA contract. NASA announced that it selected Lockheed Martin Corporation to develop a lightning mapping instrument for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. The instrument will be incorporated into NOAA Geostationary Extended Observation Satellites Program, anticipated to begin operations in the early 2030s as the current Geostationary Operational Environment Satellites R-Series approaches the end of their operational lifetime. The contract is valued at about $297.1 million and includes two flight instruments plus options for two additional units. GoGo -Go Business Aviation and AirShare partner on upgraded connectivity. GoGo -Go Business Aviation and AirShare announced they have entered into a multi-year agreement to give AirShare clients the option to install GoGo's Advance 5G and Galileo suite of low Earth orbit broadband satellite service. AirShare and GoGo are longtime partners with two-thirds of AirShare's Phenom 300 aircraft having been upgraded to GoGo -Go Advance and the remaining planes within the next year. AirShare operates a fleet of 150 aircraft in the U.S., ranging from turboprops to ultra-long-range jets. That was our Next Gen Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Fiji Airways shows interest in Audis Aviation eVTOLs. Fiji Airways recently signed an expression of interest letter with their intent to purchase Audis Aviation's hybrid electric VTOL aircraft. This is part of the carrier's effort to reduce emissions and increase connectivity for passenger flights. Fiji Airways CEO Andre Viljean said, quote, There's no doubt that the era of sustainable aviation is upon us, and through our partnership with Audis Aviation, Fiji Airways is strengthening its focus on reducing aviation emissions and defining a roadmap to serve the next generation of travelers, end quote. Fiji Airways, Fiji's national airline, is based out of Nadi and Suva International Airports. Partnered with their domestic and regional subsidiary, Fiji Link, the carrier serves 108 destinations in more than 15 countries. Its flights are responsible for 70% of all Fiji visitors. The airline plans to purchase Audis Aviation's Layla aircraft. This hybrid electric VTOL can carry two pilots and nine passengers at a time, utilizing flat-based thrust vectoring and box wings to produce lift. It's projected to have a 200-mile electric range, 400 miles total, with cruise speeds around 345 miles per hour. Fiji Airways will employ the aircraft to connect the nation's 330 islands. The Layla will also be used to expand emergency medical service capabilities by permitting operations in previously unreachable areas. After these messages, Space Perspective Development Flight 2 successful. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, by far the best aerobatic propeller ever come out. I use the Trailblazer. It adds performance to the Super Decathlon and dependability, and it's rugged. Hartzell's been an excellent partner for Whip Air, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demand. It's helping us all have better performing airplanes. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate, or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. 
The all new digital sport playing resource guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon, www.sportplane.com. Welcome back. Space Perspective Development Flight 2, successful. Space Perspective announced the successful completion of a full flight profile of its spaceship Neptune Excelsior, the fully operational test vehicle that will take its passengers to space. The flight launched from the Marine Spaceport Voyager off the coast of St. Petersburg, Florida on September 15th and demonstrated the spacecraft's key technologies. These include the first-time use of the four-roller mechanism to raise the lift balloon. The capsule is the largest spaceflight capsule for carrying humans ever flown and has the largest windows of any space vehicle flown. The Neptune spacecraft maintains cabin pressure and thermal regulation at altitude to ensure a safe and comfortable interior environment for space tourist passengers. The flight demonstrated the successful use of hydrogen-lit gas with the space balloon manufactured in-house. The space balloon lifted the Neptune capsule to a maximum altitude of about 100,000 feet, above 99% of the Earth's atmosphere and demonstrating the viability of renewable lift gases. The flight also validated proprietary software and communication systems used by Mission Control to manage the flight and retrieval process. Retrieval involved the use of a fast boat and crane, and on this flight worked flawlessly and facilitated a rapid and thorough post-flight inspection. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.